morning everybody. Uh, what a wonderful week. We've just had the news that we'll be able to go and have a service in our church buildings on Sunday. Uh, so that's really exciting. Eight o'clock at Ardley and 9.30 at Dedham and I'm sure we're all looking forward to being back in the building and seeing each other again. Um, but welcome this morning. My name's Susan and we're having morning prayers from my home in Ardley. So you're very welcome. And if you'd like to follow with a, a service sheet, you'll need to go to dedhamandardleyparishes.org.uk and on the home page, look for the services resources and in the list, find morning prayers from the Northumbria community. Our reading will be 1 Thessalonians 2 uh, verses 13 to 16, if you just want to get your Bibles ready for that. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen, Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen, Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen, Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen, Christ, have mercy. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. So our reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and I'll be reading verses 13 through to 16. And we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as a human word, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. You suffered from your own people the same things those churches suffered from the Jews, who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and also drove us out. They displease God and are hostile to everyone in their effort to keep us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved. In this way, they always, always heap up their sins to the limit. The wrath, the wrath of God has come upon them at last. Well, this is another interesting section of this letter that we're looking at this morning, and time really only allows us to highlight particular parts of it. So here are three practical theological points that came out of my own meditation and studying of this passage. First of all, Paul is thanking God that people received his teaching as God-given and not of his flesh. The evidence for this was that the word was at work in them to bring about change. So this is a challenge to us today about our attitudes to the sermons that we listen to. Do we prepare ourselves to listen to the word from God to us a church or as to us as a church or as individuals, or do we just approach it with the attitude of hoping that it will be an interesting talk from a person? Now, knowing how much time and effort and prayer and waiting on the Lord that goes on into preparing sermons, I pray that we will have eager ears, expectant hearts and open spirits to all that we hear. Secondly, there is a cost of being a disciple who wants to pick up their cross and follow Jesus and share the good news. Suffering will come to those who yield their lives to Christ. 
the world, the flesh and the devil will throw everything they can at you to see if you will run towards God and with him or away from him. So let's be on the alert, praying for boldness and protection as we move forward. Thirdly, God will have the last word with the opposition. This section finishes with, the wrath of God has come upon them at last. Now Paul here is writing about a specific group of Jews that have been opposing the, mis the mission message uh, and it's not contradicting his writing in Romans that the Jews will be saved once the full number of Gentiles have been saved and brought into the kingdom. And as I was thinking about this, I thought we so often seek justice against those who oppose us. But here Paul reminds us that God is the final judge of everyone and everything. We can leave this in his hands and get on with the work that he's given us to do. So let us pray. Lord, thank you for this passage we have read this morning. Please help us to have the right attitude as we come to listen to sermons and teachings from our church leaders. Help us to recognise that you are guiding them and directing them and they are answerable to you for the care of your people. Help us to hear you and your word to us, both as a congregation and as individuals through their teaching. Dear Father in heaven, your son Jesus went about doing good and healing those that came to him. He came to show us what you are like, and yet our sins put him on the cross after his ministry in which he was continually opposed and rejected. Help us to count the cost, to pick up our cross and follow you. As we do so, Lord, help us to remember that the victory is ours and the battle is yours. We thank you that your plans and purposes can never be thwarted and we rest in your unfailing love and provision towards us. Help us to remember and hold on to this as we go through today. Amen. Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield overshadow me, Christ under me, Christ over me, Christ beside me on my left and on my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek yet all powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. And so we finish our time together with this blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm, and may he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. So I pray you will have a wonderful day and that you will join us this evening at five o'clock for a time of prayer together. May God bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you and may he give you his peace. Goodbye for now.